Welcome to the Nightmares minicast, everyone. It's like the Nightmares podcast, where we talk about everything horror, but much shorter. Uh, Today, uh, on February 17th, Wednesday, uh, some sad news. Cinematographer John Hora has passed away. Um, And I wanted to do a quick minicast about sort of paying tribute to him because he has shot many of Joe Dante's movies. Uh, Joe Dante is a director we talk about a lot, so losing a key contributor to some of our favorite movies, I felt like we should just pay a quick tribute to his work. Um, yep. Yeah, it seems absolutely fair. Um, and of course, since Joe Dante's movies have, of course, been a major inf- artistic influence on me since I was a kid, uh, and now that I'm a cinematographer, it's... Yeah, I want to talk about... In the movies he's worked on, we can talk about the looks, we can talk about the movies themselves, just whatever we want to talk about concerning his movies. Um, I feel his work has always had a nice use of like shadow and color. And if anybody follows me on my personal Instagram, you'll see I did a little tribute of him where I said through his use of shadow and color, he creates, he brings the characters and creatures in the movies to life through their environments. And I think that perfectly captures the feelings of his work in lighting. Um, he, of course, shot The Howling. That was his first um, collaboration with Joe Dante. Uh, excellent werewolf transformation in that movie. Uh, excellent use of shadows in that movie. Um, shooting on location in those woods and even contrasting with the city location is pretty cool. Um, I know we had differing opinions on that movie as a whole. <laughs> Fuck if we know if you like it. Yeah. Uh, he also shot Joe Dante's segment for Twilight Zone, the movie. Uh, the segment was based on the classic episode, It's a Good Life, where the classic episode was about a small child, like six years old, who has powers and basically has an entire town bending to his will. Nice. Like the original sh- short story is like a sci-fi allegory to living in a totalitarian uh, society. And it's a frightening episode in terms of ideas and concepts. Whereas the movie version, like Joe Dante was like, I mean, we're remaking these stories, but I mean, these stories hold up well. So it's like, what's the point? So he wanted to do something different with it. And so basically he, instead of holding a town hostage, it's a family. And he very much, and Joe Dante very much brought in his uh, Looney Tunes influences <laughs> into the story and so it's like there's this woman who's like lost on the road and she runs into the boy and the boy brings her home to meet his family who is really just a bunch of other people who got lost and are held captive and one of those is actually one of the captives is actually nancy cartwright who voices bart simpson nice or would go on to voice bart simpson he actually traps her in a cartoon and then there's also Kevin McCarthy there, <laughs> who is from uh, most famous for Invasion of the Body Snatchers and has had a few cameos in Joe Dante's movies, particularly in the Mant movie in Matinee, nice. which we'll cover in a bit. Um, but yeah, he gets very, very cartoony with the lighting in that segment of Twilight Zone. It's a very, it's a very odd addition to the Twilight Zone canon. But a welcome one. It, it, it's cool to see Joe Dante's stamp and, of course, John Hora's camera work and lighting work in it as well. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. The, um, uh, I know the one, th- when we're talking about this too, the one that sticks out for me the most, and I know this is Zach's favorite, is, is Matinee. Yeah. Um, uh, just how he shot all that stuff you know, that was going on during the Cuban Missile Crisis and being, you know, being down there in Key West and... You know, I mean, just everything, you know, the type of environment that he set up, um, uh, you know, and how it was shot was just so... Actually on location in Florida, Key West, Florida. Exactly. Um, he also had to create, recreate the looks of like an old black and white um, B-movie, giant bug movie of that time. And even for a scene, recreate a CinemaScope uh, comedy for a scene. <laughs> One of those really bad ones. Yeah. My father, the shopping cart, or whatever the hell yeah, it was called. Yeah, whatever the fuck it was. The um, uh, I, I it, it, there's just something about it, like you know, and I know there was a, you know, obviously Joe Dante's influence in all that movie, of course, 
But I mean, like he, you know, they really had something there. I, I always appreciate when you can capture time capsules. You know, when you can really get into the essence of what a time period was like. Of course, it's over exaggerated. It's a, you know, it's a, you know, it's making fun of, you know, that that whole, you know, time of bad B movies and everything else. But, you know, but it really, you know, you really feel it. You feel what's going on. You feel the, and I could feel how fucking hot it was in Key West at that time. Like I. I can feel the, you know, the amount of pressure that everyone was under, you know, the, the stress that it was on, you know, the whole country was under during that time and added into the heat of just being in Key West, you know, it really, it really felt like you were there. Yeah. Um, uh, you felt immersed in whatever was going on. And then I really appreciated that. Yeah, that's actually a movie that, um, once I can actually see my family again, uh, that's what I really want to watch with my dad. Cause even though he, he, I don't think he's ever been to Florida. He may have been to Disney World way back when, but I don't know if it was the California one or the Florida one. Mm. Um, I don't know how old the California one is, so chances are he's the California one was in, it was in the 50s. Um, uh, Orlando was 71. Okay, then uh, it's likely he has not been to Florida then. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. He's lived a long life. He might have been there. <laughs> but my point is he did not. he was not living in Florida at that time. But he was around the age of the kids in the movie mm. at that time. So I'm kind of curious how he would respond to that movie. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, um, uh, I, I, it just really gets you into that time capsule mode. And, you know, the funny thing is it's a shame that I, you know, I think that would have been a really good genre for him to explore. And I'm, and I'm disappointed that he never got an opportunity to explore more of that you know, in other genres, you know, other, you know, historical dramas and things like that. I think he could have been, you know, historical comedies, you know, he, ha he could have, he has that feel of making, you know, the environment around you very time, you know, time sensitive. Like he could, yeah. have, he could have shot, you know, he could have easily shot something like, you know, um, uh, American Graffiti or, you know, or Days of Confused or something that, you know, is very specific of, of whatever time period. And again, any historical dramas, you know, or historical comedies it could have re could have really been there, and that should have been a calling card for him. Matinee should have been like, I can, I can do this. I can do, I can set it up to make it look like this time. Obviously, there's a lot more. Yeah, there's I, also you know, production design. Of course, there's a lot more involved in that, but there's a, you know, he had yeah. a huge contributing factor to it. Um, and of course, he shot the two Gremlins movies. Uh, of course, which are fucking amazing. Yeah. The um, um, two very different movies. Very. Like, the first one was very much we're on the back lot, snow everywhere, Christmas movie, corrupted by little creatures. And then the second one is in like New York City, just like all these random types of gremlins everywhere. And Which is so funny because it's so not Joe Dante. Joe Dante is all about the small town and the. And everything else, and it's just so funny that they, you know, gave him a whole thing to be in New York City. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, just that that fucking shot with the with the spider gremlin was so damn good. <laughs> it was just so good. Yeah, just the shadow playing on the wall. And, oh yeah, and then you know, and then Angel of Death, you know, coming up by Slayer. And the way it's the light is just beaming. Oh the, yeah, so fucking good. The um, uh, I did not think I would enjoy that movie as much as I did, and I really enjoyed fucking Gremlins too. Yeah, and much much like my two favorite Joe Dante movies, I and my two favorite Joe Hor John Horror movies as well would be um, Gremlins Two and Matinee. I uh, matinee because it's just a great movie, and of course the different types of photographic styles he had to do, and Gremlins Two just for how off the wall it had to be. It's fucking Looney Tunes, man. Yeah. Uh, and I know he did. He also did the Honey I Blew Up the Kid, which I think I watched yeah. when I was a fucking kid. I never saw that one. I, it's bad. I, I've only ever seen Honey I Shrunk the Kids and Honey We Shrunk Ourselves, the uh, which my, I think was directed by Dean Cundey. That's interesting. The um, uh, yeah, Honey I I Blew Up the Kid was like a direct like cash grab. I'm sure that's a paycheck movie for him. The um, I don't remember much of it, but I do remember it not being that good. <laughs> The um, I think uh, I might have seen like two minutes of it while flipping through channels one time. Yeah, yeah. not really, not really all that special. And then he also directed, he also uh, photographed the pilot for Erie, Indiana, which is like an early '90s kids Twin Peaks, essentially. 
Yeah, I know. That really, there was really like, fun series. Yeah, I knew that there was like a, you know after Twin Peaks came out, there was a lot of similar series like that. Um, uh, and I know Yuri and Anna though. That is that's the same kid from Hocus Pocus, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, I thought so. The um, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, another interesting movie. The um, uh, beloved by so many, but yeah, the, you know, I, I I think this guy was amazingly talented. It's a damn shame that he didn't do more. Yeah. Um, uh, looking at his IMDb, I mean, there isn't. There's only 22 credits, when most you know cinematographers have hundreds. So for whatever reason, yeah. I don't. Know. I wonder if he also d- he. I wonder if he also did commercials or something outside of movies because I, I do see he also photographed um, one of Michael Jackson's music videos as well. Um, so yeah. Yeah. The. Um, I mean. But I he'll he'll always be remembered as one of Joe Dante's DPs. I think most directors, they really when they find a DP, they really like to tend to hang on to him. The um, and I know he did a little bit of extra work for The Burbs, which is yep. one of my favorite Joe Dante movies. Um, which the, the Burbs was nineteen eighty eight. An additional photography usually means like that, that kind of credit. Usually means like if they need to do reshoots, that's more mostly gonna probably gonna be the DP who did the reshoots, mm-hmm. or if like the main DP had to leave for a couple of days because they were sick or family emergencies, that could be additional photography. Because that was 1988, and yeah, that was the year he did the Michael Jackson video and a movie called The Jogger. So the re- so he might have had a uh, scheduling conflicts for the main shoot for uh, the burbs. Burbs, yeah, yeah, that checks out. The um, uh, but yeah, overall, very very talented guy. It's a yep. damn shame, you know. He also did the VFX photography for the Weird Al movie UHF. Oh god, I really like that movie. <sighs> that's oh, that's funny. The um, uh, all these weird offbeat movies that, that some of these musical people have done. Yeah. Word Al and Cool as Ice, the Villanelle Ice movie. <laughs> All right. So, any final thoughts about John Hora? No, a very talented guy. It's um, it's a shame. You know, my heart goes out to all his, his fans and family and friends. Um, uh, you know, it's I, I, I wish I would have saw more. It looks like he kind of stopped working in the 90s and then only did something you know, in the last couple of years, um, uh, you know, yeah. the... he did, uh, he was interviewed for, uh, shout factories matinee Blu-ray. Okay. So he was still doing like interviews and such. Yeah. But it looks like he, um, yeah, stopped working in 1998 as a cinematographer with God said, ha, and then only did like, you know, a, a documentary short in a short in 2012. So it really wasn't, it doesn't look like it was much. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know. You know, he may have done, you know, went back to commercial work. Who knows? Um, I, it's unfortunate. I would have loved to have seen more of, more of his stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he was a massive creative influence on me. And if you're working that close with Joe Dante, you kind of have to be. And yeah, like you said, very talented. And it's sad that we lost somebody who has been a very massive visual contributor to the horror community yeah and you know what they you know we, uh, we make the best of the time we got and then you know and then we leave yep thank you for listening to this episode of the nightmares mini cast you can listen to all of our other previous mini casts and nightmares podcasts wherever podcasts are available also be sure to check us out on social media at midwest horror network on facebook Instagram, YouTube, and Slasher. And of course, if you are checking us out on YouTube, if you can stab that like button, smash that subscribe, click that little dingy bell to be notified every time we drop amazing content right here on MHN. And if you've already smashed the subscribe button, if you can go ahead and smash the share button, that'd be awesome too. Want to get the word out about this particular channel. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.